Isn't it frustrating when you buy something and there's that one little design flaw that just annoys you over and over each time you see it or use it? Apparently a small flaw somehow improves it. For instance, there's this nightlight in our bathroom. It works great and even has USB ports, but you barely touch it, much less plug something into it, and it just sort of droops like that. Not only is it not great to look at, but it's a bad design electrically since the prongs are very visible and exposed. Well, I finally decided to do something about it. 3D printing to the rescue. I do want to make this a pretty simple project, so I'm going to work in Tinkercad and wanted to show you how I did it along with a few tricks I've picked up along the way. Now, obviously, most if not all of you are not going to have the same nightlight I have, but working on things like this, it's how I learned and it's a great learning experience for us all. And who knows, you might realize you have something kind of similar that's just begging for you to make an upgrade. First things first though, I had to come up with a few measurements and use my handy little calipers. So I'm going to make the main box that fits back here, I'm going to make it 55 by 58 by 3 millimeters, and the goal is not to be too bulky, but I also don't want it to be too tight. Now the plug itself is 30.4 by 20.2 by 11.5, which I'm going to round up to 31 by 21 by 11.5 for the hole around the plug. I don't need the offset that sticks out to be quite that big, but I do want to make sure that the whole thing lays flat against the wall, so 27 by 15 by 11.5 millimeters. With all of that, let's get to designing. In Tinkercad, the first thing we need to do is create our main box. That's the part that's going to hold everything together. So click on the box tool on the right and either drag it to your work plane or click again wherever you want to place it. As I said before, I settled on 55 by 58 by 3 millimeters, so let's change our box dimensions. Select the box, click one of the edge squares, and then it's easy to use tab to move between your height and width measurements. Just press enter when you're done, or you can click to the side to close everything out. Now select the box again and rotate a bit on your view so you can see the top measurement square. Click that and make the whole thing 3 millimeters high. And now we're done with that main box. Creating the hole for the plugs just as easy, except this time you're going to use that striped box shape or the hole. You can use a regular box if you want and just convert it to a hole. It's up to you. So put that box hole at the top edge of the main box, and I'm going to change the dimensions to 31 by 21 by 3. We don't want too much wiggle room here. To put it in the right spot, select the box hole and the main box by either pressing Control A to select all. You want everything selected, or hold down Shift and click on each part. Well, then on your toolbar, just to the right of the group icons, click on Align. Or you can press the L key on your keyboard. Now you're going to see some dots on the sides, and these show where you can align your parts. For this hole, we need it to be in the middle from the left to the right. So look at the dot in the middle, and it may be on the top or the bottom of your box, and that's going to be on the left-right line. If it's grayed out, that means you've done a good job and you're already centered. If not, click that middle dot, and your hole should jump to the center. Well, then we can move that hole down four millimeters closer to the middle to give it some room from the top. Now, we need to make sure that it has dropped to the bottom on the work plate so that our height's correct. So we'll select it and press the letter D on your keyboard. Next, for the offset itself, we're going to create another normal box at the bottom of the main box. And we're going to make this one 27 by 15 by 11 and a half millimeters. Now we need to align the offset to the left and right, just like the hole, and so select it, press L, click the center dot, and boom, you're centered. And also, this box needs to be three millimeters from the bottom edge, so move it toward the middle by three millimeters. Now at this point, I wanted to round off some corners to make the whole thing look a little nicer, and well, that's where I ran into a problem, because Tinkercad doesn't really have the ability to make fillets or chamfers like Fusion 360 or any other design program. But what I can do is something Tinkercad calls a radius. And also, before I get into that, you may have wondered why I haven't grouped anything yet. Well, this is why. Tinkercad apparently doesn't work the same on group parts, and it won't show the radius for a group part. 
Now, there's all sorts of tutorials out there about using circles and squares and grouping and stuff like that, but let's just use what Tinkercad gave us and then we can move on. In the Shapes Library, click the Search Magnifying Glass at the top. Making sure you're searching in Community, we'll need to search for our fillet. But is it just as easy as putting fillet in the search and finding it? Nope, um, that'll actually show a fidget spinner. What we actually need to search for is meta fillet, and there's no space in between those words, meta fillet. Your only option should be a rounded off triangle that says meta fillet. Wow, so meta. I recommend clicking that little star on it, and that'll save it to your favorites. And then we can drag it to the work plane. Now, we need to make this new piece, our fillet, match our main box, but what size is right? Well, we can figure that out and find what looks best by selecting our box and changing the radius until we're happy with how it looks. I personally like how seven millimeters look, so that's what I'm going with. And we need to make sure we remember that radius number for later. Then we can change the radius back to zero and work on our fillet. Our new meta fillet needs to be the same size as our main box, which we set at 55 by 58. Then we can change the radius on that fillet to what we liked, which was seven. Now we can drag that new fillet over the appropriate corner, make sure it's aligned perfectly there, and then change it to a hole. Something I just learned about recently was how to use the mirror tool, and that's going to help us a lot here. We need a copy of our fillet, but we don't want to use Control c to copy it since that's not going to keep it aligned. Duplicate is what we want. After we duplicate it, we need to keep that part selected, hold Shift down, and then also select your main box. Then you can click on Mirror. Now you can click on either set of the lines that appear. There's a left, right, and up and down, and the fillet's going to flip over and be perfectly aligned on the opposite edge. Then, guess what? We're going to select both of the fillets, duplicate, shift to select the main box, and mirror those duplicates over to the other side. Nice! Well, now you can group all of these fillets with your main box, or wait until later and just do it all at once. I did want to point out that space that I left around the hole at the top and the offset at the bottom. With our new rounded corners and because the hole at the top is bigger, when I moved it down four millimeters instead of three millimeters like the offset, well that gave our main box a little more room and helps to make it a stronger part. Being aware of design choices early on like this can help you to get a better part quicker. Well, let's do a little touch up on that offset we created just to soften it up a little bit. Select the offset box and set the radius for it to about 1.5. Not too much, just enough to look nice. And since this box is already down inside the main box, those lifted corners on the bottom, well, they're not a problem with this one. Yay! Okay, so now we can select all Hit that group icon and everything should join together, which also forces all of the holes to cut out of the main box. Then all that's left to do is print out the part and test it. Well, I'll be honest, that turned out looking great. I'm going to give it a little bit of time and testing and just see how everything works. And after everything works out fine and I'm pretty happy with it, then I'll probably put a little dab of glue on there just to kind of hold it all together. Little projects around the house, they're perfect ways for us to stretch our design skills and learn. It's also a great way to show off how awesome 3D printing is. Or, you know, to say it another way, learn, create, and amaze. <laughs>